something every single one of us can relate to. Do-overs. You know, all the things, moments in life, you wish you could go back and do over. And our buddy uh, Justin is here. Justin, let's start with you. You want to give us one? What's a yeah, do-over for well, your life? I've got plenty of do-overs. A lot of them aren't really suitable for daytime TV. But uh, <laughs> when, I, when I was in college, senior year, a very stressful time, I actually bought a term paper online. Whoa. I only did it once. And at the time, you really don't think much about it. But like years later, looking back, I paid so much money for college that I was really just cheating myself. So right. if I could do that over, I would, I would get Professor, if Professor Coffey's watching, I will give you that Western Civilization paper. Wow. I hope he's not watching that. You just busted yourself. <laughs> I totally busted time. myself, but that's what it's about. But your parents are proud of you. Very proud of you. Because you learned a nice lesson. I learned plenty. We're yeah. going to skip right over my do-overs in life because the <laughs> list is lengthy. <laughs> but uh, we did want to help out a viewer who had a very specific type of do-over. Um, Justin, let's just introduce them. Let's check it out. You guys watch this. Check it out. I did something in the past that I feel kind of guilty about, and I've never said I was sorry. She's been holding on to that guilt for 17 years, and it's about something she did to her best friend, Laura. I met Laura when I was 14 years old at a church camp in a small Kansas town, and we became best friends. Laura calls me one day when I was in college, and she'd gotten engaged, and I was thrilled. She asked me if I would cut cake at her wedding reception. And cutting the cake is a big deal in the small Kansas town Laura grew up in. It's like being in the wedding party. About a week before the wedding, my then boyfriend told me that he would not be able to attend with me. And I didn't have enough time to get another date for the wedding. So my choices were to go by myself or not go at all. I didn't go at all. Not only did she skip the wedding, she didn't even call ahead. She just didn't show. I never called her to tell her why I wasn't at the wedding, and she never called me to ask why I wasn't there. And it's been 17 years. Who knows if they would have ever spoken again. But luckily, they bumped into each other. I reconnected with Laura at a concert about eight years later. We started emailing and calling each other occasionally, but I never mentioned the wedding, and she never asked about the wedding, so I don't know if she's still upset about it. I really want to get this off my chest, because obviously I haven't forgotten about it, and I haven't forgiven myself for doing it. Now, I really want her to know just how sorry I am. Man, that would have been the first thing out of my mouth if I ran into her at a concert or, you know, the coffee shop or something. I'd have been like, where were you? you yeah, know? it's I like mean, the elephant in the room. I mean, it's like, let's deal with that. I, I mean, I can't believe they've been in contact and emailing and chatting and all this and that they've never brought it up. Well, what happened, like after the wedding, they just drifted apart. Their friendship drifted apart. They live in completely different pla places in the country. They never saw each other and it just kind of, it never came up. Well, you can see where we're going with this one. Justin is going to bring the ladies face to face and uh, we're going to meet them right after this. Coming up, the confrontation that never happened until now. Well, why didn't you come? I still don't know. So we're talking about do-overs today. We were trying to help one of our viewers do over an embarrassing moment in her life. And Justin, we thought you'd be perfect at this. You know, yeah. you're just such a people person, oh, with magic, and just in general. I the, yeah, the best job ever. I get to travel the country doing magic shows. And what's awesome is, I'm sure you know, like being an entertainer, people often feel compelled to spill their guts to you, you know, and feel <laughs> so comfortable with you, you know. And I hear all the time people telling me things that they wish they could do over. And I'm a firm believer that it's better late than never. So uh, I'm happy to do so this. So here was the setup. These, these two friends became very close at camp. They were best friends. One asked the other to uh, come to the wedding, of course, when she got engaged, and to be the cake cutter, which is kind of a big deal where they come from. It's like being in the wedding party. Well, one friend uh, just didn't go, didn't show, didn't cut the cake. Then the two of them get back together eight years later. Nobody's brought it up, the big elephant in the room. So let's see what happened when the two came together. Watch this. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm Justin. Good. Hi, Justin. Nice to meet you. Nice I'm Laura. to meet you, Laura. Laura, let's cut to the chase. You know why I'm here. Someone from your past is haunted by something that happened, and they want to have a do-over with you. Do you have any idea who it could be? I'm uh, curious and uh, perplexed 
um, been trying to think of who it might be. I don't yeah. have any ideas. Who want to send me out here exactly. to, to help? What is it? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the answer you've been looking for is right here on this DVD. Hi, Laura. It's me, Disa. And I have asked Rachel Ray to help me because I have felt guilty for the last 17 years because I did not come to your wedding and cut your wedding cake. And I certainly hope you're willing to see me so that I can apologize to you in person. It was disappointing that she wasn't able to participate, you know, in my special day. Um, and it left curiosity as to, you know, why she wasn't there. So, I mean, she missed your wedding. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. She was supposed to cut the cake. I'm a firm believer that it's never too late to make things right. Would you be ready to see her and forgive her? Absolutely. Well, that's good. You know why? <laughs> why? She's outside the door. Oh, gosh. Go get her. Hey, Laura. Lisa. <laughs> Yay. What are you doing? Sorry. <laughs> I came to apologize. <laughs> Lisa, how much has this bothered you over the years? Every year since we have reconnected and been emailing, and you mention your husband, I get a little tense and think, okay, this is the, this is the year. I'm gonna say I'm sorry. And then I just say, oh, happy anniversary. And I have never told you how bad I felt for leaving you with no real knowledge of why I never showed up. Well, why didn't you come? <laughs> That's a good question. Why didn't you come, Lisa? I still don't know. Laura? I did not come to your wedding because um, a week before, my date canceled on me. And um, I just thought, okay, it'll, it'll work itself out. Someone will go with me, but nobody went with me. Oh. And I am truly sorry. Well, <laughs> forgiveness given. I mean, I was, I was disappointed that you weren't able to be there, but I feel bad that you've been carrying it around for that long. It's actually taken me 17 years to work up the courage for this apology. So it was really great to have Justin here pushing me along, making sure I got it done. So I was I, not going to let her chicken out. No, seriously. No, and I was, I was, like, I was to Laura's house. We're going to make it right. Thank you, Justin. You're welcome. I want to see this wedding. Do you want to look at my wedding pictures? Yes, I do. I want to see it too. Okay. Apologizing to Laura today makes me feel uh, like a weight has been lifted. So now we can talk about anything. Oh. I see a cake. Here's the cake. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now that Lisa's has um, been able to express her thoughts to me and get that off of her, her mind, I think that that will enhance our friendship from here on out. So it looks like a sweet little happy ending, right? But then we got a very interesting letter, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looked like an end-it-all hunky-dory, but then, you know, it's, it's, it's all exciting the day that we're there, but then a couple days after, I know Laura had a chance to really think about it a little more, and she sent an email to the producers. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Sure. Um, I feel that I was unconsciously a bit protective of Deesa's feelings. I was all but awestruck that she was a no-show. I entertained the idea that perhaps her friendship didn't mean quite as much to her as it did to me. If she was my friend, then she would have been at my church at 10.30 a.m. on August 11th, 1990, sitting on the bride's side. I decided not to chase her down and bug her with my insecurities, so I just let it go with my mad turning into sad. 